Welcome to video number eight and our final video of the beginner course for N8N. In this video, we'll be covering how to debug workflows. So in the previous video, we talked about error handling, how sometimes workflows when they are pushed, pushed to production, when they are activated, can encounter errors and debugging is the process of fixing those errors and making sure that they don't uh, happen again. So let's start by talking a little bit about what debugging is and why it's an important skill uh, to master. So when workflows or rather when specific nodes within a workflow fail, it can be for many different reasons. They can be configured wrong. The uh, underlying service can be unavailable. For example, um, if you are using Google Sheets or Slack, you might get a 500 error, meaning that the service is simply unavailable at the moment, or problems can be related to input data. So let's say you're receiving a webhook, the webhook can be missing information, causing the workflow or one of the specific nodes to fail. By default, this stops the workflow from finishing its execution, and it sets its status to failed from the execution history or execution log, we can find the list of all of the workflow executions that failed, and then debug them one by one to make sure the errors don't happen again. It is important to note that sometimes a workflow can fail from an automation standpoint without necessarily being tagged as failed, in the sense that if you are trying to automate a certain task, but no node had an error, then sometimes the task will not be automated and the workflow won't be tagged as an error. So this is why error handling is extremely important uh, to make sure that your workflows execute correctly. And uh, we'll be covering uh, an example of this in just a minute. The easiest way to debug your workflows is by using the debug in editor feature in NN. Um, this is a super powerful feature that lets you pin data from an execution history into the current canvas of the workflow. What this does it is, is it effectively copies over whatever data was in or whatever items were in the failed execution and pins them into your current workflows editor so that then you can use this data to debug. The same way that when we um, used the pin feature in the webhook node uh, a few videos ago, this is the same thing. It allows you to pin error data to uh, your workflow canvas. Pin data will have a blue or purple symbol in the bottom right corner. And workflows can only have one set of pinned data at a time. So you have to work through uh, different types of bugs one by one, uh, making sure that um, you are fixing them all and that by repairing some you aren't creating other bugs. Once the error is fixed or handled, um, we can use the retry feature to trigger again all of the failed executions. This is a super useful feature because when um, a workflow fails, we might have five or 10 executions that were unsuccessful. And from the execution log, you can decide whether you want to retry with currently saved workflow or with the original workflow from the time of execution. The retry is executed from the node with an error. Uh, this means that if the error in your workflow comes from a wrongly configured node previous to the one with an error, you will have to use the copy to editor node to re-execute these because it only executes from the errored node. Another useful feature when debugging is the edit output feature. 
the edit output feature lets you manually edit the output for a specific node. Uh, while, it come, it, while it can come in handy when testing or debugging workflows, um, specifically if you're using webhooks and you don't want to have to send uh, many different kinds of tests events um, without requiring you to execute all of the past nodes and uh, do all your transformations on the data. Uh, it should be used sparingly as it is not a very scalable method. However, in cases where retrying is not possible, it can be a quick way to fix a backlog of a few executions. Another very, very useful feature when debugging is the workflow version history. So when making updates to workflows, error handling or debugging, sometimes it happens, we make mistakes and we can lose sight of where we started from. Luckily, we have the version workflow version history. From here, you can see all of the previous versions of a given workflow that were saved. Uh, this can be useful if you need to revert some changes that were made to a workflow uh, that might be causing bugs or to inspect the structure of a previous workflow version of the workflow. Uh, this can be combined nicely with the retry feature if you need to revert to a previous version and then retry multiple executions with the currently saved version. Let's jump into NADEN and uh, do two different examples of debugging a workflow. So here we are in NADEN and uh, we have this workflow that we're going to uh, debug. The first step of debugging any workflow is, well, first of all, understanding what the workflow is supposed to do when it executes properly. So here we can see uh, we have our execution logs, we have a successful execution, a failed execution, but let's first look at the successful execution to sort of figure out what the workflow does. So here we can see we receive a webhook in the webhook we have an ID key with a specific identifier. Then we get the user. So this is another function of the Google Sheets. We're going to be uh, getting rows, but specifically filtering on the ID column. And we're going to be uh, looking pretty much for the row with the specific ID. Uh, this returns all of the row information uh, all of the information from the different columns in the sheet. So we get an email, first name, last name, and a company, as well as the ID that was uh, the same one as we filtered on. And then we send a Slack message with info for the specific email, their first name, last name, and company. Now we can look into the failed execution. Here we can see uh, quickly by looking, uh, we have an error. Error cannot read properties of undefined reading to string. So clearly here, it tried to read the body.id. And in uh, the webhook, we can see that this webhook did not have an ID. So what we're going to do is we're going to click debug in editor to copy the data over. And we're going to deal with the different cases. So first of all, we could say we could add an if and make sure that we have a valid uh, ID. So here we want the json.body.id this time to be to exist. And if this is the case, then we can go up this path and get the user and send the Slack message. Here, there are multiple ways we could continue debugging this. Either we could say, if we don't have an ID, so here, let me rename ID. If we don't have an ID, we could, for example, send a Slack message saying, um, webhook received did not have ID, uh, and that way we can look into it. But we could also be a bit smarter here and see the goal of this workflow is to look up a user in 
uh, the specific database. And here it's with the ID. But we also saw by looking at the uh, past execution, that in the database, we have an email. So instead of looking up the ID, if we don't have an ID, but we have an email, we could try looking up using the email. So going back to the editor, we have the case with a valid ID. Then we could say we have the case where we have an email. And this would be json.body.email exists. And then all we would have to do is do the same actions instead of looking up the ID, we would be looking up the email, json.body.email, and then we would send the same Slack message with the information from uh, the contact. What we can do from here is then deal with the case where we have none of them. This would be a great place to use the stop and throw error um, node here and a little message, no ID or email. From here, we have a fixed workflow. So first of all, we can verify that with this error data, it still works. So I can test the workflow. And as we can see here, it didn't have an ID. So it went down to the email field. It had a valid email, so it got the user and it sent the message. In this specific case, we wouldn't be able to retry this workflow, because we made we had to make the modifications before this um, specific uh, node. Another case I'd like to cover is this execution. What we can see here is, we received the webhook, we tried to read the user, and nothing happened here, no message was executed. And what, what and this is what I was mentioning earlier, where sometimes a workflow can not fail, but can also not be successful. And this is a very good example of this. So what happened here? Well, clearly, we tried to look up someone with an ID that we can see here in the input data, but no data was returned. So something that we can do here is, again, this time it won't be debug in editor, but copy to editor because um, it wasn't errored. And what we can do this time is now deal with the case with this case. So if we test the workflow, we can see that the updates we made still work with this execution, except we're still not getting the output we wanted. So here, something we can do is in this get user um, sheet, by heading over to the parameters, we can um, set, sorry, by heading over to the settings, we can ask it to always output data. And this means that even if it doesn't find a contact, here we'll have, um, here we'll have uh, the information of an empty item. From here, before sending the Slack message, we can set an additional check. So here, we could say, does the contact have an email? So this would be by reading the information we would have here in Slack, json.email. If we have an email exists, then we send the Slack message. Here, we would have to do the same modifications. So copy this, put it here, we also check. And if we have a valid email, we send the message. In the cases where we don't have a valid email, and so there was the lookup was unsuccessful, we could just uh, drag a stop and throw error contact not found in database. And this, we can do it this way. 
Here we could sort of factor this a little bit uh, better, seeing as all of these do the same thing, we could just use a single if and a single throw error by attaching this one here. This way we have uh, debugged the workflow and whether uh, and if we can't find the user next time we'll have an error and someone can hop in and deal with the case where we don't have a user. If this is usual, then we handle the case differently. If it's not usual, we can figure out what's wrong. Thanks for listening to the eighth and final video of the NNN beginner course, where we looked into debugging workflows and fixing failed executions. In the advanced course, we'll be covering some much more advanced topics, advanced workflow building, complex data flows, uh, more advanced examples, as well as, well as error handling and debugging. Uh, thanks for your attention. And for some of you, see you in the advanced course.